<laughs> you laughed at our jokes earlier. Yeah, you laughed at this. She laughed at your jokes. She never laughed at my Marcy. jokes. What can I do? I'm not going <laughs> to um, So we think OG have the upper hand here. The Race King doesn't have a shot. No, they Robert. absolutely have a shot if okay. he gets out of lane surviving. I just think that if he has to get booted when Elder Titan's like level 5 and he's level 4, that there's just not going to be enough space to recover. Lesh is a pretty greedy mid. All right, well, let's find out how game two is going to play itself out. We're heading over to a commentary duo of Moxie and Fog. Well, it looks like we're going to get to see a Seth Elder Titan. And Fog, I know that you are a huge fan of this particular hero. Tell me, what are we going to expect here? Briefcase, much briefcase, lots of damage, <laughs> much fun. No, it's, uh, it's it's a good pick here, especially with like the puck and the tiny. It it amplifies their damage up a lot in the mid game, so I think it's going to be pretty potent. Uh, it is a pretty greedy draft, I do feel, from Smashers with the with the Underlord pick as well. This is a hero that you know you're playing your own lane for the most part. You're not going to go help out too much to those side lanes for some time. And Last Track and Wraith King are just individually they do have some greed between themselves. So we'll see how they do set up these lanes. I wonder if they actually do put the a bad in top because I feel like that could be kind of a disaster. Yes. I feel like they might have to do some weird stuff with their lanes because I actually do not want to have this double melee top for Smashers because that's just going to enable Seb to get out of control. And I think you really don't want that to happen for this. Seconds to no, you absolutely don't. This is, uh, you know, kind of similar to game number one where Rasmus really had to pop off on the axe. This is going to be OG here with uh, Seb, of course, you know, having to pop off on this Elder Titan and really, you know, start making that tempo here, but they do have a nice ward over here on the side. They can spy out quite a bit. Nice stroke of fate landing over on two right away. Soxa is just gonna... Not quite toss. He's trying. <laughs> He's just a little tiny in a big world. You know, that is a very heavy Underlord that he was chasing. This is true. It's our rune exchange. Looks like Smasher should get three. Mm. So, a little bit of a decent, you know, a little bit of a better start. However, we did see, I think, the other day when the team grabbed four bounty runes, they actually lost the series. So that was a little bit of a dice. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That is a nice way to get started, but sometimes yeah. you just can't keep up that nice start. And they are going to be doing exactly what we said. They're going to be putting the Underlord and the Abad in bottom. Love it. I think this is way better, but look at what they're going to actually start out for with OG. They're actually going to have Soxa start out bottom as well to try to do some tossbacks. They do this a lot when they have a greedy carry that is going to struggle versus like something like an Underlord, this heavy high base damage hero. They tend to start out tri lands when they see this. So they're going to try to set up Ana for success. Ana, he's got a 20 base damage differential to Under, so they do have the help. About to say, a lot of times currently when OG is playing, it feels like it's a, a bit of a four protect one sort of mm -hmm. deal. Uh, Thompson is always, you know, the one who's kind of making those plays early, trying to just be very annoying. Um, but at the end of the day, it is very much, you know, on on his shoulders. Yeah, that does mean that Sedlo is not going to get that farm that we were saying that he probably will up top since it's going to be that tiny securing farm for Spectre. So maybe he will have a bit of a slower one. As we've seen them, like we said, we've seen them do this quite a lot. Just leave Seb on an island, they secure that tri lane farm, then they make the moves later on once the Spectre or the X greedy hero does get away with what he wants. Now, I know like with some of the teams, you generally want to empower the hero that's going to be coming online earlier, right? So in this case, I would definitely say that that would be Seb, although hold that thought because the uh, action's coming out here on the bottom lane. Photic Shield being used over here by Tofu, but Ana on the hunt, he's going to be able to collect that first blood. And uh, are they going to try to get anything else here? Stroke of Fate over onto Rasmus. They really are just kind of struggling here. Rasmus trying to move, trying to get some of this damage off, just getting those spells down. But eventually, No-Tail will collect a kill. Yeah, so I think it really is just to, it is just enable Inspector. Otherwise, he gets like nothing down here versus Underlord. So they're just going to st actually stick with the three of them. Tofu team, he's back. He's just dead. He went alone. That's, um, yeah. Even our Observer, I don't think, was quite expecting that. No, and now Rasmus, he's an Underlord down bottom without an Abaddon to TP to help him. So he has to be careful of his positioning. If there's mana on the two supports, he can die. And they are going to successfully pull the lane back with a single pull, looks like. No Tail should be able to do that one. And one melee creep actually gets through, so it's actually going to be able to deny most of that wave. This bottom lane is going to be a problem now for Ryzen. I mean, you've got to do the walk of shame back down there if you're the Abaddon. And it's a lot of time where Rasmus just can't approach at all. He's not going to be able to get any sort of farm. Top lane, though, they are Top trying to make some... Stuns. Trying to make some things happen on set, but like you said, when you stack the stuns, you're not going to get that optimal amount of damage down. Yeah. You can't be making those type of mistakes. You're, you're, you're heavily crushing the CS, which is fantastic right now for Hellbird Smashers, but this is an ETU who's now 
Level three, he's gotten away with, I feel like, more than he should have up top by himself. Toss back right over to No Tail. He's got that ink swell on him. It's going to proc. Not quite enough damage here, though. Again, they follow up with that aphotic shield. But look at the way that they're zoning here. This is just free farm for the Spectre to do pretty much whatever she likes. Because every time they get a little too close, they immediately get punished. Look at the Soxa already yeah, pincering just... into position. Toss up with the Avalanche. It's a stroke of fate. Aphotic Shield does buy them a bit more time. And looks like Ana's going to back off here. Just go back to farming creeps. And No-Tail does have to be a little bit careful. He is getting chased down here by Tofu. But just going to go safely back to his tower. It's such an, it really is such an interesting approach. This is like, just because they really want to scare, they're keeping the tri even still. Clarity up on the side with Soxa, No Tail also with the Bassy for that mana regen. They're just going to keep trying to pressure and just kill this Underlord. Mm, Soxa has the ink swell, waits patiently, will be able to go land over onto Rasmus again. They have that aphotic shield toss back though into the avalanche right over to Ana as No Tail chipping away as well. Tofu doing everything he can, trying to push them back. That Firestorm does hurt, so Soxa has to back off a little bit, but meanwhile, in the top lane, they do manage to find the kill on Seb. So they are making strides in that top lane, despite the fact that this bottom lane is just so difficult. Tofu maybe staying just a little bit too long, does have the shield, though. The Sal will be used on Rasmus. Really interesting approach. It's a sacking Seb, hoping he gets the best. He's gotten a lot, he dies, but they are securing that farm. You see Spectre with 18 last hits, 200 lords 11. That like, almost never happens when it is Spectre versus something. Just look at his base damage. So that's the whole reason to why they're doing it. We are starting to see. You know, Smasher just come out a bit more ahead out of this because the ranking is getting absolute free farm. Do you like the way that they've decided to just, you know, I don't want to say put all the eggs in the basket, but the way that they're playing, just really trying to protect Ana, make sure that he can get all that farm. Or do you they think they should be helping Seb? Uh, it, it's a it's a decision they made, right? It's it's what they just it's the way that they like to play. They like making sure that Ana has a good start when he plays Greed. So well, that's, it's a different approach from each team. So yeah, that's a, it's great. If they end up having this like Slark or this uh, Spectre having a good item timing on like Blade Mail and just gets this super farm, then absolutely that's it's gonna. Work. Working his way over there, and see Soxo did make a little bit of a rotation over towards that mid, but he's headed right back here again. They're trying to contest this little bit of a pull. Ana's making his way over here to the shop. He's going to get his ring of health, so that's going to enable him to stay in the lane a little bit easier. It's Tofu. It's rotating over to this mid lane. They're double securing bounty. They're double securing the rune for the mm -hmm. flash. Uh, Storm Stormers are already having a pretty good time. Soxo. Well, gets the avalanche off here. Are but Gilgir will snap up the invis rune. Radiance middle Bottom lane, some more plays attack. trying to get done here, but again, not quite enough damage without that uh, tiny. And now Gilgir invis is just sitting around the mid lane. If Topson steps up too far, they can definitely chain stun and kill him. Topson being quite cautious, and it means that Seb now in a solo matchup versus a super farmed Wraith King. So it doesn't feel easy for Seb. Dream Coil followed up with the avalanche. Toss back as they've got their eyes over here on this Lashrek. They want to burn him down, but they're not quite able to as they end up losing Soxa and Thompson as they turn right back around and find No Tail. The positioning coming out and the lockdown is just so good. Meanwhile, the bottom lane here, this is not looking very good here for Ana, though. He's going to try to just throw out the dagger, slow him down. He's going to run away. What a rotation, though, coming out from the Smashers. And just. A uh, little bit of, un maybe unfortunate, but also just not the best targeting decision in coming out with Moji. They tried to go for both, but they tossed and stunned the ABBA to break the coil. And because of that, they didn't have the burst to kill the last, so the rush kills everybody. Pretty big mistakes from Moji and some nice rotations from the Smashers to enable the Slash, who's already having such a good start. Socks are making his way up. He's even TPing bottom, and he's got to refill up Rasmus with the bottle, too, and look to actually kill Ana here. This could be a really nice move for Storm Stormer. Yeah, we'll open up with the Pit of Malice, followed up with Storm, and there's just so much damage coming out from the Shrek. It just helps rip him down as Rasmus gets the final hit, and down goes Spectre. Out of the tower. Yeah. yeah, they killed this Spectre, is a and they give the mid lane to the supports, which they would love that experience. Some excellent stuff from Spectre. Is there any 3k advantage? a lot of damage placed on that bottom tower. 
and a glyph was forced. So now the second go, Stormstormer is going to clear this wave. This tower is just dead if OG doesn't set up massive defense. Edict will just kill it. Go. TP coming in from Ana. Jump immediately with the silence. We'll get the Pit of Malice off, though. They're going to back off. It's just going to take off that Phantom's Embrace. But they do protect their tower a little longer. There's a nice double damage rune over here that Topson, I'm sure, would love to pick up. That's, a, that's actually pretty heads up. You know, they, they don't kill the Lesh, but they push him away from the tower, and they're going to keep this tower alive for Ana for quite a lot longer. That's It's a cool play. Even though they don't get the actual kill, they just force him away. I like that. You know, because of this Thompson, it forces in mid, and Tofu has to be careful because it's, because it's tiny hanging around. This is the benefit of having a hero that can clear out waves as they are going to try to slow down Rasmus. Double get damage. the Ingswell to connect. Thompson's here. He's got the double damage. They've got the silence as well as the Waning Rift comes in hot. Body blocks coming out too, and No Tail will eventually be the one to get the kill. But those are some urn charges coming over here for Thompson. And he can steal a bounty away, level 8, and he's got this DD. He can actually swing mid because he still has Dream Coil available. He actually bringing Seb, who's level 7 somehow. Nice stomp landing over here on the Lashrak. Tofu immediately removing it. Tops again in position. He is going to settle here for, of course, Tofu, who is leashed up. And we'll get taken down. Oh, that's just a 5 of Baden. Who cares about him? Get your last track away. Gilgar has already Radiant hit six on the line pretty early on, and Stormstormer already making another Man. move up top. No, so just keeps it down. Yep, and uh, looks like Rasmus may be teleporting right here to his death. The socks are being in position already. The teleports are coming out, though. Try to go for that stomp, and there it is. That's the final hit. More teleports coming out. Ace did manage to take a tower while this was going on. He does yeah, have his arm very active. Flesh just moving from lane to lane with this max edict. He can easily just take out these towers. Mid tower is super low too. Oh, Ace takes down Soxa while this is going on. The chase is on now over here on Seb. Topson can't do too, too much other than the slides because they burst him down. The haunt comes out. Be able to get the kill on Storm. Stormer perhaps diving just a bit far. It's a nice earth spike. Tofu is going to try to keep Gilgar alive. Does have that spirit chasing after him. He didn't finish the tower off either. It's actually at 30 HP. It's still alive in the mid lane. It's diving a bit too far. It did cost the haunt, but well worth it for OG to pick up this pesky lash who's been quite problematic. Hey. They're still protecting this one. Thinking about it. They will, eventually. The yeah. tower has been denied. Dyer are scared. Bottom lane, the teleports are coming out. They want Rasmus. Bit of malice, but the avalanche are already connecting with the stop, the sleep, the burst is there. And now they'll turn their attention right over to Stormstormer, who he's doing a lot of damage. Stops are almost falling there, but Topson will collect a kill. Finger coming out from Gilgir, though. We'll be able to remove Topson from this equation. Oh no, Stormstormer, after having such glorious rotation, such a great start, back to back deaths as soon as he TPs out. That's still quite a painful. At least they get Topson. They got no tail needing to be a bit careful here. That's a lot of damage coming out from Ace's Tofu. Just pulling here in the bottom lane as the Fodic shows just chasing down Seb. Does have Gilgear nearby, so Seb does have to be a little bit careful, but looks like they want to focus on this tower. The five of Bad and chasing away the three Elder Titan. Love to see it. And bottom tower might also just get denied. OG might just go for this one too. Yeah, Radiant's bottom tower has been denied. Disappoint you. You can see some pincering coming out. Perhaps trying to make some moves here over onto Seb. Ace, pincering. Immediately the Hex comes out. They bide their time. Earth Spike and a couple big old crits. Even used the Fire Blast. Tofu taking the last hit on that. I don't think that was necessary, but... He says thanks, at least. That's true. Good manners are important. Manners maketh man. Rasmus, though, top lane. He's got the ink swell, the silence there, just chasing down this poor Underlord. He is not getting any breathing room with the Phantoms. Embrace the toss up, Soxa. Cleaning up on Rasmus. Oh, and he had his hood in his backpack. Oh, Perhaps no. If he has actually the hood in his inventory, maybe he pops it and he has the time for Tofu to save him, but that is a big slip of Rasmus also dying back to back a couple of times now as these ancients and hard camp stacks now start to get worked tower on by under attack. Ooh, there's a, a chipped vest that just got found. Do have the uh, mask though on the specs currently. He's probably going to take the chip. It's just the value. He's waiting off over on the side. Just get spotted out though by the spirit. Looks like they'll back off for now. And Sub will be allowed to hit some creeps. Yeah, and 
Seb's gone for the 2-2-4 two, two, build, actually liking it because he can't get into the faces of them so much. He just wants to buff up the magic damage. Four points in that aura. Lots of magic damage on them as well. Let's go. Ooh, he breaks okay. the smoke. Look like I mean, they're slowing him down. I think they really wanted to get the jump on someone else here. He uh, just gets the stun off during the toss and he ends up living because of it. Yeah. That was sick. Top lane, Spectre poking away here on Tofu. It doesn't feel very good when you're just getting chased down like this, but eventually, Ana will back off. Tofu's just gonna go and dig himself a little hole here, find himself something yummy. Yeah, he's got Tranquil Boots. He'll just chill, wait till those come back active. He's just taking the, the scary place to farm right now in this Abaddon while his team is looking to make the move over attack. to help him out. Gilgar as well as Ace, they have Finger online. They can get the initial stun onto Ana. Very likely they can just finish. Gotta just not stack the stuns though, right? The Haunt immediately coming out though, realizing that something feels a bit off as they do get the Dream Core Lobo on Tamith, but the Hex is just able to control Ana, so he's not gonna be able to join into this fight over here as Rasmus, he is ticking down. It's another kill for Tops, and Stormstormer's on his way, and they do have the Yule to get the Soul Bind off. Soxa though, he is just burning to all of these spells coming out from the Shrek, and hey, look at that, beautiful. A nice double damage rune available now for Stormstormer. You couldn't ask for a more precise hit there from Smashers. It's literally as Ana is haunting away, they get the kill. Like that's that's picture perfect. It's a it's a two plus minutes, two and a half, three minutes, where that haunt is gonna be down. That was really, really nice hit by them. Now that means Ace is just gonna be enabled to have a much earlier radiance timing than anything else. Spectre is gonna have some problems. Ace is getting closer and closer to that relic. He's had a lot of room here to be able to breathe. Let's Die. see, though. Let's see, because the last game, you know, Smashers, they were looking very, very good. They were getting everything they needed on Rasmus early. Uh, they're making the right moves, but eventually it just reached a certain timing what where they this? weren't able to uh, keep up the momentum. Sort? So what do they need to do now? Fact, what do they need to do to keep up this momentum and keep the pressure going? Well, I, think it's, I think the state of the game is actually pretty good for them. Just like, chilling out, they're farming up really good on all their cores. They, hunting the Spectre like that, that was the ideal. So I think hey, if they could do that again in the next like 80 seconds or so when fingers back up, that's great. But right now, they, they're, they're okay with like just chilling out. If heroes show on the side lanes, they can threaten them. But this is a fantastic start for the Wraith. Ace, you know, I do feel like he's much more comfortable with like, just Wraith King Ricky. That hero just feels a little weird. And overall, as a carry, he's not the best. And I feel like Ace, he's just not really the most comfortable with something. Much better on a traditional carry. They definitely good. looked excellent last season, so definitely excited to see how far they can go here in, of course, the upper division. A Blink Dagger does get picked up on Soxa, though, so positioning is going to be very, very important here. So he's going to be able to initiate quite nicely. And Ana makes his way down towards this bottom area, and there's some pressure being placed on top, though, coming out from OG in the meanwhile. Well, we got an Uber service, though, coming out here. It looks like everybody's headed up. They're looking to try to protect this. Gilgar has his blink coming out on the lion chew in a moment, flying out on the courier. So they have a great way to set up these fights now. I think they'll wait and for no it though. Standing under a ward. Yeah, he really Die. is as he walks right into Ace. Couple big hits, one, two, three. Down goes No Tail. And it looks like uh, they do manage to get the tower during all this. They've got some good timings here. They also have Rasmus finishing up a pipe in a moment too, versus this pump. Pretty huge as Gilgar. He jumps up on high ground, but a little early. Just a little bit. Dream Coral does get used, oh. but it doesn't seem like they... Yeah, look at this. They have the protection here coming out from Tofu. Topson. They are looking, hoping maybe someone will get a little bit out of position as Soxa does reveal himself, but they'll turn their attention now over here towards this uh, this tier two. A lot of TPs, though. Force the coil. That's that's pretty sweet for Gilder. Just jumping into the high ground blindly. Not usually something you want your supports to do, no. <laughs> but it worked out this time. No, so folks. Scary for it. It's very tanky. Gonna be drop the aphotic shield. They're gonna be leashed up. They'll use the haunt, and they've got the silence. This is gonna be possibly yes. It's gonna be a first time death here for that wraith. He's coming right back up again. He needs people to go and help him out. Nice split earth being tossed down in the middle of everything, and there's gonna be able to just hold on into place. Soxa jumping onto the back lines. So it's able to take down Stormstormer with a little help here from Thompson. Now Tofu, he uh, they have the vision. Thompson gets himself a double kill as the rest of the side of Smashers are just on the back foot. Stormstorm is still very vulnerable. He's so squishy. He actually went for the Kaya with the Yule, so he doesn't actually have any XP, any HP bonus to protect himself. He's gonna just be completely reliant on the pipe from Rasmus and the shields from the Abaddon. That's, that's 
that's a scary place to put yourself in. Not even like a casual book or something like that to guard himself versus all this magic damage. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried now for Lash. I think the Wraith King's gonna have an excellent game, but this Lash, I think, could just stand up. ET Spirit on top of him with a tiny combo, and he's just dead. 1200 HP does not save you at this point. Boyle followed up with Sox of a toss. Gilgir's here, though, and he does manage to go and they just control Thompson. Nice. Down goes the puck, and they're still hunting. They're looking for more here, realizing they have a little bit of a window. They do spot out Soxa, and they're going to rip down this ward. Make the side of OG a little blinder here around this area. Gilgar on points per top. usual, 304. Excellent game so far from this lion. Especially when you consider we thought he was definitely dead. Seb, though, over in the mid lane. We talked about this positioning. They just have so much damage. Radiance They'll find the kill on the Elder attack. Titan. OG getting caught off guard there a bit here. Just stepped up a little bit too far, too far to farm, and this is just the enable Ana now at this point, really, just because mm -hmm. of how they're getting picked up also on Thompson. Like, it, it's back to like the usual OG, I would want to say. It's just make this Spectre the absolute full carry. Just keep looking for these the big pops, though. So I'm still going to be watching Sox at the ET Spirit. This last track has to be so careful with his positioning, because he can just oh, oh, almost oh, I want him to get either the Vitality Booster or Point Booster ASAP, because he's just he's very frail right now. And there's only so much that really, you know, the Sabaton can do to, to keep him alive, right? You know, it's a little bit difficult because their initiation is a little strange coming out on the side of Smashers. There's no traditional jump uh, like you would normally see in some of their drafts. And their save is it's very short distance. So Madden playing versus Grimstroke, you're going to either get leashed in double silence, or you're going to get silenced with Puck. It'd be a little bit tough to ask Hopefully, to get all those moves mm -hmm. out onto Stormstormer. Let's pick up the Vitality Booster. 1600 HP now. Ooh, they find Ana. The dump over the Earth's five pit of Malice. Ace just chopping away over here. Do they have enough burst damage? Oh, yes, they do. They take down the Spectre. It's a beautiful grip coil, though, over on the back lines with that Ixpo connecting on multiple targets. Look at them just chasing them down. No tail now. Forced to just try to hide in the trees. He's not going to be able to, as Tofu's trying everything he can to try to keep him alive. Meanwhile, the back lines, though, Thompson poking away over at Tofu. That ultimate will, of course, proc as Thompson's hunting the buyback now coming out from Lion. They've got the E-Blade. They're trying to just blow up the support. Need to be careful here. Ace was looking to wind up there with the Wraith Fire Blast. Is not going to be able to get it off in time as they realize on the side of Smashers we should probably back up. I like. I actually like this buyback from Gilger just in case, even though it doesn't get them anything, it pushes away those three from just diving forward and just killing Ace and Goku probably twice. So I do like that he does go for that there. They gotta be careful, they're sacking. They stacked up so hard for the combo. The tiny mm -hmm. have a toss, the ink squall, four man stomp from ET and Splitter. They do have to be a little bit more careful when they do that. We do have Blink picked up now for the Wraith King, so. We talked a little bit about how the initiation's a bit tricky here. It looks like he is going to be the one who's going to be uh, running on in with his face, but you have to be careful with the Wraith Fire Blast done, right? Because of the fact that uh, it is very telegraphed. Yeah, he does need follow-up though. They want to be able to just like mm -hmm. insta-lock down someone with Gilgar and just kill them immediately with a finger because there's no real saves on the side of OG to be able to protect any of it. So they can erase heroes right away at the start. They want Thompson. Thompson. They want him so badly and already though. Gonna go up to the high ground, sees the bounty rune. Ace considering it, but looks like not going to hard commit here. Euphotic shield over on Ace trying to protect him. The jump forward here coming up from Sox with the Avatar. Tofu trying to get a position, trying to keep him alive. It's Ace chasing after him over on the back line, so they will find Seb. They've got the Ink Spell, they do have the shot on him, so he's gonna be able to heal up quite a bit. He'll turn right back in. Dream Coil gets used over on the back. We talked about Storm Server. He needs to be able to stay alive as they get a nice player off set, though. Will fall. He's gonna back off. Finger getting used on the back line. We'll be able to take down Thompson. And now Ace, he's all silenced up. Ana running away here. They still have the reincarnation, too. Ace, he wants it. He's chasing after them. He finds himself no tail. The stop coming through does manage to land. Radiance burn, though, definitely hurts his no tails trying to hide in the tree line. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it, though. Not with that firestorm. Oh, and 
and uh, Gilgir is just poking away over here at Soxa. Maybe a little bit uh, too far away from the rest of the team here, but it uh, looks like OGs, they're a little bit too nervous. They're not going to follow up on poor little Gilgir here. Top tower is under no, they're, they're just, they're really on point with the way they're getting these catches. Gilgir over and over again, just getting Thompson. He's got his number in this game. The lion counter usually versus the punk. This time OG, they didn't take that counter into Lion and Gilgir. Might be making them regret it a bit there. He's constantly getting these disables, and it's the way that they postured themselves in the fight. If they start to retreat, you can see where OG is just going to be able to like explode these heroes with the splitters and all that. But because they all stick together as a unit, and they run into the fight, it puts OG on this weird positioning in the fight. But they have to kind of just run away with the ET, puck goes in, and the rest of his team just bails on him. Great awareness from Smashers. Actually take the fight rather than looking to run up. Definitely Gilgir's positioning has been absolutely wonderful this game. So it is difficult to get your hands on that puck. And you know that Thompson, he likes to play this here. He wants to, you know, dive in and out. But it just always feels like the Smashers kind of have his number. Yep. The way Thompson always plays is just, it's super aggressive and it's super disruptive. So if Gilgir is in these right places at the right time, it's going to break a lot of OG's annoyance that does happen in a lot of these games that causes Ana to just wreak havoc and get these crazy farms. If he's just controlling Thompson's chaos, it's definitely going to work out for them. So now 7k gold lead, this Wraith King 4k above the next. Looking really good for them right now. Seeing some of the TPs coming out now. Ace jumping forward immediately. Sees Ana. He's not going to focus him down, though. He's got his eyes on Sox, but instead Avalanche coming through. That ink's well healing him up. Radiant They're chasing Seb over here, trying to teleport out. They do manage to find themselves no tail, though. He's not going to be able to teleport away. But it looks like the Spectre and Soxa will be able to survive. As everybody's hopping in the bus, and we're going top. Ta -da. I like this. They know that they're going to go play around this uh, triangle side. They still have these two wards covering the area, too. They can swing and find Ana for sure. Oh. Ana does have Haunt available. It's about to buy his ulti orb. They fallen. know exactly where he is. Forward here. Oh, he went left. They went up. Did Dying. indeed. A prize. Nice attempt with the Uber. Radiance top tower is under attack. Dyer's Still going to place some pressure attack. here over on this tier two. Thompson now picking up that blink on the puck. So perhaps you know we talked about his chaos. Gonna be able to make a little bit more this time around and uh, perhaps get a bit more information before Gilgar can jump on him. Getting very close to Axe Q here for Seb, so that should change things a little bit in these fights. Yeah, that should make it. Seb actually be able to be a walking force in the fight rather than just a stomp and a splitter. He'll actually be able to do something and contribute a little more. Uh, Gilgar also pointing out he's hit level 15. So the line, does get, it's only four stacks, but every little thing matters. Two he might be enough for him to live. Christian coming out. Oh, the finger immediately. Oh, well, that's going to be a little bit more stacks here, Fog. Here we go. Five now. All right. Getting more swall over on that lion. Pressure's on over here. How did they get in here, though? All right. The toss back immediately. Again. Silence up there holding on in place. They've got that ink swell, though. It's doing plenty of damage. Red Topher trying to save him alive. No. Nice stream coil on the back lines as well, holding them into place. Stormstormer trying to get out as much damage as possible here as Gilgir is just trying to drain all this mana to slowly but surely. Yes, you can't do anything to him other than poke him when that's going on. Jump into the back lines here from Topson. We talked about that chaos. The haunt's coming out, but okay, yes, Ana going forward here. This nice avalanche, but he's a little bit too far. He's not He's not comfortable here. I don't think they're going to be able to. No, the toss up coming out from Sasa, trying to keep him alive. It looks like he is going to be the one who's going to have to die, though. Oh, he lives because of the Manta dodge on the splitter. He actually would have died for sure on it. Oh. Jumping in again. They are indeed, and they managed to go and grab the puck at the last second. Stroke of Fate tossed out. They're focusing on the buildings. Oh, I love seeing Gilgar. He puts the shard to use there perfectly. Just stands in front of a tiny with his just mana drain. And the tiny can't do anything. He's mad you. Another ink spell. They stacked up a little tight here. They do have the blade mail. Another split earth though coming in on it. He's not looking too great right now. The dive in over onto the back line. So stop. Buys a bit more time. But they do. They take down Anna and they take down Thompson. No buyback on the Spectre. No buyback on this puck. Hover Smasher is hitting fast and furious and just hitting very, very hard right now as they immediately make their way down over to the bottom racks. 
they should be able to go for this one too. Gilger landing, uh, Gilger doing just clutch plays across the whole board of this game. The, la the, the mana drain to stand on the high ground to bait some spells where they can't kill him. Then this last stun, he stuns the Ana, but the Toxic Radiant's blinks on top of the stun, so he gets caught by it, gets chain hacked, gets killed. And Ace just jumps forward and gets Radiant's himself an easy dump tail. Very well played here, coming out from Smash. Well, He's stuck in the back. Yeah. And just gets stunned instantly. They're gonna finish off the rat. Oh, they, they cancel out the Uber. They've decided that they want to stay here. And they'll get themselves a Soxa. Very clean. 11-0-6 on Ace. Looking much more comfortable on Wraith King. The whole team looking phenomenal at OG. They do get the Ags on the ET, but I think we may have reached a point where that Ags isn't going to have the effect that I think OG wants it to. I think I'm just concerned with the amount of damage that's being dumped out here coming out from Ace. I have to say, you know, it's, it's tough for Tofu. We talked about the fact that he is going to be, you know, primary save. Uh, and he does have to be very, very close, but he's managing it. And Gilgar's position has just been fantastic here. Seb, look at Gilgar, he's eager. You have to be a little careful, though. They're going to focus up on the objectives here on the side of Hell Bear Smashers. Middle tower will go down. Do they want to push their luck here? Do they go back in, or do they, do they play it a little safe? They are so strong right now, rallied around this. The Lesh now has reached points where he can't get burst. Bloodstone, Essence Ring, all this good stuff. Rasmus mm -hmm. with the pipe and Crimson Guard. The damage just feels like it's, it's nowhere near going to be there for OG. I am actually not really thinking they're going to kill many heat targets at all. Maybe not even the supports in these next few fights. Well, they're smoked up, and they're hoping that they can get someone. I mean, Tofu and Rasmus are very far forward. Lion, Gil Gear. Perhaps they can make something happen there. They get the Dream Coil off and the Spool together, but No Tail immediately just absolutely crumbling. And there's just so much damage, and the Earth Splitter not quite landing where they wanted to. They have a nice Dream Coil for Stormer, buying himself just a little bit more time. Seb punching, trying to do everything, and they just can't take down this Lion, as eventually they take down Seb on already falling. Thompson somehow still alive and over there the finger comes out and down goes Soxa. <laughs> Only Toxa. With every single spell thrown out there, the Crimson Guard, the Pipe, all these heals from Tofu as well with this, the shield and the Fog Knight, you know, Miss Coil, they can't kill anybody. Even though they throw absolutely every spell, Gilger gets the initial blink and reposition himself with his team on the high ground. Dagger, Gilger jumping forward immediately. The E Blade, though, coming out from the pop, hoping that they can blow off Gilger, but they just can't seem to do it. And again, he's got that magic immune as they just start draining all the mana. Down goes Ana. No buyback for 78 seconds. Rasmus. Yep. There's the GG. Hellbear Smashers, 22 net worth lead, have managed to take down OG. They came from the lower division. And, uh,.